Jacob. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Rough Riders of the Plains and the White Man's Burden. Their continuing mission to explore strange, uncharted lands, both for sport and for livelihood, to seek out new life and new civilizations, lawless freedom and rough discipline, to boldly go where no man has gone before. <laughs> Sorry about that. My name is Space Commander Tyson Brock. I'm an astronaut. Well, it turns out Mother Earth is tired of taking all of our shit. <laughs> so, we're going to Mars, baby. Maybe gonna make it home numero two, if you know what I'm saying. But I think you do. I love our planet. You know, but that doesn't mean I think we should get it right before venturing off into the rest of space. That's just silly. I mean, did, you, did we get Europe right before venturing off into America? No. Going into space is one of the best ways we can save our own world and ourselves. Manifest Destiny first led men west, then to the Western Hemisphere, then the rest of the world. Now, it leads to space. In 1845, journalist John O'Sullivan coined the phrase Manifest Destiny, the belief that the United States is divinely ordained to expand to new frontiers. I think it's pretty clear that we figured this whole Earth thing out. And scientists, world leaders, and William Shatner alike agree with me and believe the next logical step is out there. In fact, Robert Zubrin, author of the book The Case for Mars, asserts that human exploration of Mars will be possible by the year 2014, while well, scientific discovery and the possibility of a second chance planet are good things. We must also consider what ideologies are driving our outward expansion. With the prose, Exodus to Planet 4 by Evan Kleiner, Poetry, the Astronaut by Gerald S. Tate and The White Man's Burden by Rudyard Kipling. Drama. So the Intro to Star Trek by Gene Roddenberry and Astronaut Jones by Tracy Morgan, along with selections Eternal Frontier by Wilson De Silva, The Final Frontier by Stephen Hawking, Manifest Space Destiny from The Daily Texan, Manifest Destiny in Outer Space by Robert Zubrin, and Our New Manifest Destiny by Corey. Beam Me Up, Scotty, a program about the new Manifest Galaxy. Five, six, seven, eight, rocket. I'm flying on a rocket. I'm packing my suitcase. Hey, look out, moon! Rocket! Why go into space? I mean, what's the point? Aren't there better causes here on Earth? In a way, the situation was quite like that in 1492. Everyone might well have said, why send Columbus on some wild goose chase? Yet, Columbus's discovery of the new world had profound impacts on the old one. And I believe that going into the rest of space will have an even greater effect. On the day of the launch, everyone was uh, understandably nervous. Oh, me? I was uh, shit your pants scared. I mean, I thought I was going to crash the shuttle and just kill us all. <laughs> well, you know, the uh, plan was to go into hypersleep for the eight month journey to the Red Rock. Um, what I hadn't planned on was Dougie. You see, after five months of travel, Dougie woke me up for, well, <coughs> the hell? Dougie, what are you doing? I'm smoking weed, motherfucker! <laughs> Check it out, man! closer to sending humans to Mars now than we ever were to sending them to the moon in 1961, and we were there eight years later. Given the will, I submit that we can have our first human teams on the surface of Mars within a decade. Take up the white man's burden. Go forth. Send forth the best ye breed. Go. Bind your sons to exile. While the masses of society rush headlong into the pit of self-indulgence like lemmings to the sea, I challenge you to look up 
Behold the starry sky. Consider the new lands to settle out there. Catch the spirit of this new manifest destiny. It is God's will for us to settle the stars. So let's get at it, shall we? Star settlement, here we come. Going into space won't be cheap, certainly, but it will only cost a small portion of world GDP. Now I know there are those who will say that our money would be much better spent on problems of this planet, such as global warming and climate change, and I am not arguing that those things aren't important. But what I am saying is that we can still do that and save a quarter of a percent of world GDP for space. A quarter of a percent. Isn't our future worth that? Finally, we arrived at our destination. Big red bitch. I mean, we searched every square inch of that whole planet. Planet, planet. We didn't find a goddamn thing. Yeah, as a matter of fact, we were just about ready to pack up all of our shit and get out of there when we heard this radio transmission. It was some sort of interference that sounded like a distress call. It's too late. They've already launched them all. 300 nuclear devices all headed straight for us. It's the year 3053, and life on Mars as we know it is over. Repeat. Mars is done. The astronaut with his throttles up soared through the night sky. Suddenly, there came a great blackness and the loss of gravity was apparent. But the astronaut, he was unaware in suspended animation. The computer awoke him 100 years later. And the astronaut discovered he was a billion miles off course. And he realized just how alone he truly was as he searched for signs of life. So, just like we told Houston on the way back, it looks like Mars is a no-go. You know, for a while it seemed possible that we could just up and move an entire species from one planet to another. Hopeful, even. This is a pretty fitting end to our species, I suppose. Well, plus, you know, that whole restarting society thing would be a huge pain in the ass. So we're going home. Earth. The astronaut didn't dare think of Earth, for this would only cause him strife. The people he once knew had surely died since. And the astronaut realized he made a grave mistake. If only the clock could be turned back 100 years. But he won't be coming home. The astronaut had booked this trip one way. For the scriptures say, it is God who created the heavens and the earth to be inhabited. So let's inhabit them. Praise be to God, Mars, Io, Europa, and Titan. Space, the final frontier. Take up the white man's bird. Have done with childish ways the lightly proffered laurel and the easy, ungrudged praise, and search your manhood to boldly go where no man has gone before. Space, the final frontier.